RMX 1000 effects versus SP404 Mark II effects. The 404 Mark II is obviously way more than just an effects box, so keep that in mind for this video. It's a sampler and effects box, that's what it's known for. It now has a step sequencer. There's been three or four updates since it's been released. Personally, this might be a hot take, but I would actually consider it to be a groove box. I mean, if the poly and play is considered a groove box, then this could also be considered one. The pattern sequencer just keeps leveling up. It also has DJ mode. I personally have covered the Mark II and the SX extensively, so here's a playlist in case you're interested. Whereas the RMX 1000 is mainly an effects unit, there is a cool little sequencer down here which you can load up your own samples into. It also has some fun looping features, but this little sequencer down here is in no way comparable to the 404 sequencer. With all that background, this video is specifically an effects comparison between these two units. I would argue that the effects are the most unique feature on each of these instruments as well. It wouldn't really make sense to compare them in any other way. I recently did a showcase event for Roland and of course, I brought the Mark II. Everyone that I showed it to was impressed. I can see myself doing a live set with just this and maybe like a MIDI controller. Enough blabbing, let me show you this in action run this track. And if I wanted to, I could add drums over top of this. Two, three, four. Notice that it just locked onto the tempo. And then I could. I could also affect just the drums, or sorry, uh, just the input, which is the incoming audio, or just the drums. So outside of the crux of this video, which is comparing their effects, these also happen to work really well together. Neither Roland or Pioneer is sponsoring this video, but a big thank you to DistroKid, who is today's sponsor. If you're looking to easily distribute your music to major streaming platforms, and especially if you're an independent artist or producer, DistroKid is just, it's just the way to go. It's the creme de la creme. More on them later in the video, and I'd just like you to know that if you're interested, there is a discount link in the description of this video. Use it, it helps me a lot. Quick breakdown of the setup, it's all just audio routing, so audio out into the audio in of the RMX, audio out into my audio interface. As I mentioned, the RMX 1000 has a tempo lock, but it's used to something that's very easy to lock onto. So if you get into more experimental rhythms, it might have a hard time locking into those sorts of tempos. Like I'm pretty sure it's not gonna lock onto odd times. <laughs> there are a lot of effects similarities between these two units. This whole section right here is like a more developed version of the isolator on the 404. So isolator being basic EQ control within your track. So I'm just gonna play something. I do have a habit of just boosting the mids. So it's kind of just like a textural change. As you can see, I have the same setup here, isolator. Basically the same thing. And then the extension of that, I also like to use trans slash rule. So this is kind of like, uh, it's like a fill. And I could choose which frequency I want to fill. So let's say just the kick. Mids and kick. And then all, everything. Cut and add is essentially the same thing but you're adding much more uh, dense fills. It's like, what is that, 16th note triplets? Something like that. And then gate and drive. I find this to be very specific. I don't use this very often. So I can cut the highs, but when I boost them, it really drives it. Right, so very specific use. And then there's this bop it looking section right here. If you can't keep up with it, you lose. Some more similarities between this and SP404 multi effects. So basic similarities, we're gonna start with echo. I could choose the frequency that I want to echo. This is sort of like a high pass, low pass. I mean, it is a high pass, low pass on the echo specifically. And then that's the note value. Uh, with the 404, I could choose more specific note values. So triplet, dotted eighth notes.
and I can really blast that feedback. So it's just a different thing, just different flavors. Lots of feedback. Within multi-effects on the 404, there is a lot more echo options. So tape echo, um, wherein there's a second page where you can control like the, the quality of the echo. This is sort of a, like a vintage feel. Uh, I'm not sure, I don't believe that this is, no, it, it doesn't latch onto the tempo. So this is a little bit more freehand. Right, and I could change the quality of the echo. This is wow and flutter, so it's the echo is sort of fluttering. Oh boy, getting experimental. Tape echo is definitely my favorite. There's also time control delay, which does latch on to the tempo. Let's hear it. Second page of parameters as well. So this is where you can dampen the delay. So there's like a high pass, low pass on the delay. You could also take sync off if you want. So you just have a lot more uh, colors and textures to choose from on the, on the Mark II, which is a common theme throughout this video. The Mark II is in my opinion, the king of textures, especially lo-fi textures. And thanks to Roland's latest update on the 404 Mark II, you're able to outsource your effects controls to a MIDI controller. So this just sort of blows up the controls of the instruments and puts them all into one place, eliminates menu diving essentially. You can run up to four effects at once with the Mark II, but yes, I would suggest having something external to control these effects to to get the most of them. And if you want some more information specifically on the latest Mark II update, that's a video for you. There's also other basic effects that both units have, high pass and low pass, but once again, you have these hands-on controls with the uh, RMX 1000. So if you just want a clean low pass, which is very smooth. Yeah. There's like just the right amount of resonance. This is like an echo over top of that. And then this is a filter sweep. you can change the speed of. And it's essentially the exact same thing with high pass. Same controls. Whereas with the 404 Mark II, it's just a different flavor. So let me put up that resonance. So that's the thing. If I turn it on, the resonance is just always on. That's where it sounds good, but if I turn the resonance to zero, it almost just sounds like I'm turning the volume down on that track. So you want, in my opinion, a little bit of resonance, but then you're sacrificing the color of that track. I mean, this is, we're, we're nitpicking now, but something to, to consider. In terms of effects, those are the main similarities, but then there is the, what I like to call the standout features for each of these instruments. The 404 is like a culture, it has all of the classics, and in terms of sheer amount of effects and like textures, lo-fi textures, it wins by far. It could be used as like a master chain of textural effects if you'd like, so shift effects settings. I've got two master effects right here that I could choose whatever I want, so maybe vinyl sim. Change these settings. Whew, that pump. Maybe a ridiculous amount of wow. Maybe not. Without? With. Right, so very compressed. It's got that pump to it. Another really cool lo fi texture is cassette simulator. the age of the cassette, how much hiss, another loud flutter. Oh geez. And then there's this catch feature here. So it's like your cassette is catching, skipping. I like to keep it low so it skips every once in a while. 
So these are stacked on top of one another. I can, of course, add more effects on top of that. Right, so four effects at once. There's another effect that we can jump back and forth to. I myself am an avid 404 user. It was one of the first uh, electronic instruments that I became interested in. And so take it from me, I know that it takes work and practice to actually make these effects sound good and to find, you know, uh, sequences, effects sequences that you actually like. So if you have that time and you're into crafting something, the 404 could be right for you. Whereas with the RMX, same track, bandpass filter, one knob, so this is the bandpass. It just sounds good. It sounds good right away. It's so easy to use. There's a lot of choppy, skippy, loopy effects on the 404 of the classic is DJ FX Looper, the most overused effects in the world. Let's try it. There's also uh, what I would consider to be like the next the next generation of the DJ effects looper scattered. It's much more intense. Like it's hard to keep the uh, the tempo when you play it. Three, four, one. You can make it even more intense. Yeah. And then there's dozens of other effects to choose from, uh, all of which are quality. Let's look at what I think are the RMX 1000 standout features. We've heard a lot of them in this video already. One more time with bandpass, it sounds good on everything. I mean, come on. That's just bandpass alone, by the way. There's also noise, which is like a little noise sweeper. It's nice to throw these in every once in a while. Spiral up is also interesting, quite specific. Reverb up is the same sort of thing. Very specific. It's DJ equipment which is built for performing, so everything is right there in front of you. You don't need any sort of external controller to blow things up like with the 404. If you're a DAWless or hardware user and maybe you're looking to develop a live set, the RMX 1000 fills a really big hole that not much else does. That's what she said. I don't get it. And the 404 Mark II just got nothing on filling that hole. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a downfall to that. There's another side. Because it's so specific, it might become easy to get bored of the RMX 1000. It hasn't happened to me yet, but let's say I'm doing like a one hour live set. I can't just use three effects over and over again, right? It's something that I could see myself using pretty sparingly during a set, so is that worth the price. And this is an appropriate segue into our next topic, price and quality. But before that, let's talk about today's sponsor, DistroKid. If you are an independent artist or producer, DistroKid is just the way to go. There is a discount linked in the description, which I encourage you to use because it's a discount and also it really helps me out. With DistroKid, it's $20 a year to release unlimited music to all major streaming platforms. And the thing that makes it special for independent artists and producers specifically is just the sheer amount of promotional tools that they offer to help you promote your music. I use many of these tools myself on pretty much every single one of my releases. Hyperfollow is the first one that comes to mind. It's essentially a free link in bio link. You could claim as many of these Hyperfollow pages as you'd like, free of charge. I use them for 
every single one of my singles and also as a landing page for all of my socials. I also like their promo cards, which is something that I also use for every single one of my releases. Just select the single that you wanna promote and DistroKid will generate promo cards for that single. If you are interested in streaming on Twitch, DistroKid virtually allows you to become an affiliate member right away, which means that you're actually able to make money streaming. This is just one of many tools, it's 20 bucks a year, it's kind of a no-brainer. And again, make sure to use that discount linked in the description of this video. Let's get back to it. Despite the fact that the RMX 1000 is mainly an effects unit in comparison to the 404, it doesn't offer much else and it's more expensive. The 404 Mark II, in my opinion, is 2022's choice sampler, 2022 and beyond. This thing just keeps getting better and better with updates. Whereas if you're into DJing, maybe you have DJ elements within your setup or your set, the RMX 1000 is perfect for that as well. And let's say you have it all and you just have that one thing missing. Build ups and drops, RMX 1000. Textures, lo-fi effects, on top of being four million other things, 404 Mark II. Another comparison is how each of these handle gain. I find that with the Mark II, if you push the gain too much that it, it gets a little bit distorted and it sounds a bit heavier. The low end gets a little bit distorted. The RMX 1000 does handle gain better. I like how there's an input and output right here. This is an easy fix though. You just turn your volume down and maybe if you're routing to the RMX 1000 or maybe a compressor, this is not a problem. That being said, if you don't have a compressor, this might be an expensive fix. If you're on the lookout for an effects unit, hopefully this video informed you in some way. There is a purchase link specifically for the 404 Mark II and the SX if they're still available in the description of this video. Use those links, it really helps me. Uh, I make a small commission from that sale. It helps keep this channel going. Like and subscribe, any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section. I will be getting back to you. Hit me up on social media. I will get back to you. It's all love. Let's hear that band pass one more time. Peace.